But anyway, I thought that he had mentioned that I had done things on freight cars before, and there were, and people would like to know a little bit about cars. And it seems like you almost have to study. You know, there are people that are more modern modelers that know all about all the different covered hopper cars that were used in grain service and such. And uh, I'm going to just talk about uh, box cars from maybe the 30s up into the 50s. Uh, that's the time my model. I don't. Pardon me? Um, but I'm far from an expert on this stuff. So if there's anybody that would, you know, a lot of this stuff you don't learn anything unless you open your mouth. <laughs> so if there's if there's other. Uh, Corrections made to what I'm saying here, or someone has something to add, feel free to do so. But these, the, the previous photo, I think is the same photo. These were taken by Jack Delano uh, during World War II in Chicago. Uh, and I'm starting with one of the older cars here. This is a, a double sheath car. It's called double sheath because you can see it, the outside of it's completely wood. Um, and they were still around in 44. These cars would kind of, uh, most of these, these cars were all built with the K brake system. And that was outlawed from interchange in 1953. So a lot of these cars didn't make it past that time because the railroads weren't going to spend enough money to upgrade the brake systems on them. When the World War II took such a, such a toll on them. And after the war, um, the steel cars were coming out by the thousands. So railroads were buying new cars and getting rid of these old things. Hey, Clark. Uh, and it, yes. Could I interrupt you just a minute? Could sure. you go back? Yep. Back more? No, that's far enough. You know, look at the ribs on the top of the car. If you yep. modeled it, if you modeled them like that, they're not uniform. People no. would say you got a problem. Yes. I was, yeah, because I, I, like I was going to say before, I put this together a month or two ago and forgot about it until this morning. I looked at it to see what I put in here. And that was one of the things I was going to mention is the, the bats on the, on the roof, the, the unequal, well, they're kind of equal on the ends there, uh, that pattern. double spacing. Yeah, but there's also, notice the pattern is the two ends are equal, Clark. So is the in the middle mm -hmm. over the door. Yes, there's one in the middle too. So, yep, yep. Yeah. It is a pattern. Yeah, so it is a pattern. A, uh, if you're ask modeling it? this Milwaukee car, you definitely want to do that. Can <laughs> I ask a neophyte question? Yeah. When you when you say double sheath and the outside is wood, what is the substructure? Wood. Wood horizontal. You, you, well, you can see that there's hor. There, there's nail lines along here where they nailed to. Um, I should have found a picture of one of these cars, a cross section, but so I didn't have one in the computer and I didn't take the time to scan one. So there, um, were, there were only I believe two they were horizontal on the inside. There were only two horizontal boards because I see two rows of nails. There was so also the verticals framing. too. It was a wood framed car with wood on the outside. How's that sound? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Clark, couldn't it yeah. also be a single sheeted car that they uh, eventually put second coat of sheeting over? So that it could be a single sheeted car underneath? I don't, I, you know, they could have a metal framing underneath. Um, that's something I was going to, there's a, something else in here I was going to check on too. And I didn't, I looked real quick and couldn't come up with the right answer, so I quit. Um, but yeah, the, the the actual double, I was trying to stay away from, from the actual uh, description of a double sheath car, because like you say, it 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 actually has two rows of, of sheathing. There's one on the inside, there's the wood framework, and then there's the sheathing on the outside. I do believe that's, if that's incorrect, uh, I'm speaking out of my ass here, so. We'll go on to the next car. <laughs> uh, uh, this is this is this car you can see made it uh, at Reway Day. It's 1957, so it was around at least that long. 
And this is a newer design car. Uh, these might have been, I'm not up. There were, there were, they class these cars by designs, by a, a year time. And 1923 design sticks in my head. Now, whether this was an actual, I, you know, I'm sorry, I could have looked this stuff up, but I didn't. <laughs> but I've had the model of this car. You can still buy these. You can buy this model from F and C. Um, but it has steel ends and steel roof. So it's it's a more modern car than that one we looked at previously. Yep. And then we'll go to what's called the single sheath car. Because a single sheath car only has one layer of wood. And as you can see, it's on the inside and the framing is steel and it's visible. Now, if we look at the one on the left, the, the fresher painted Milwaukee car, that is a USRA design. Uh, they were built in like 1919, 1920, around in there. And the, the government basically, after World War I, the government had taken over the railroads with the, and, uh, and the, they had basically beat them in the ground. So then they came up with the, some designs for freight cars and they basically forced them on the railroad. Here, you're going to buy 2,000 of these, or you're going to buy 500, and the railroad weren't given a choice. Um, but that car, the, the newer car, you can see has eight panels, four panels on either side of the door. And um, it has what they call hat section bracing. And a hat section, if you look at it, if you were to take one of those and lay it flat, cut it in two, it looks like a hat, like a man's hat, a derby hat. And uh, the car next to it, the, the older painted car, uh, well, it's not older painted, it's just an older, older paint job. That is a six panel car. You know, those are three panels on either side of the car. And that has what they call um, a Z-bar bracing. And the, the, if you were to look at the end of one of those, they would look like a Z, but with a, a straight horizontal, that vertical section would be straight, not bent over like a Z. But you know, it's got it's got the Zaro look to it. And the car in front of it, come to think about it, it looks like another USRA car. The Milwaukee had thousands and thousands of these single sheath cars. If you look up behind there, you can I I can see three more just at a quick glance. I don't see the hat. They, no, you can't. I uh, will show you on this next card. Now, there's a, something I didn't look up. Maybe I'm sure somebody knows. There are Pratt Trust cars and How uh, Trust. How Trust. And these are How Trust. Them, yes, these guys, you'll notice that the rib starts at the top of the door and, and slopes away from the door to the bottom. <clears throat> now, if you look at this car, this is a Pratt truss. You notice the truss is at the bottom and goes out to the top. Right, yeah. Okay, now this one here, you can see on this car, because it's a good enough photograph, that those, those hat sections, there's a flat section, it comes up, it goes back down, and then there's another flat section. So if you were to take that and lay it flat on the ground and cut it in two, it looked like a man's hat with a brim. That's where they get the name for a hat. Or, or what, what Clark is calling the flat sec section might also be called a flange, where you have the flange on either side of a channel. Yeah, that's a better choice. Okay. Yep, that's a better choice. <coughs> yep, and the channel is hollow. That center part uh, that sticks out is hollow. Um, these things had a tendency to, to rust. Oh. And Oh, <laughs> I can't it, now. I it came to you. Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It did. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, these things had a tendency to rust, and they weren't as popular as the Z. Oh. Um, <clears throat> in that 1923 design period, again, uh, the Pennsylvania built thousands and thousands of these. Uh, their design, which uh, other railroads use. Yeah, this is an X-29 here that we're looking at on the left at the bottom. And uh, 
you can see it has a flat roof uh, and uh, it's it's a smaller car because they had it's about it, probably if you look right above it that Milwaukee double sheath car might even be a hair bit taller than it is but the Pensy being the, the standard railroad of the world screwed up everything and uh, I'll show you later on what happened to these cars. But now I was going to look today, and I didn't. I forgot. The car next to it, the, the MP car, you can see that that car, has, the roof was not, not painted. That, that car has a, a, an unpainted roof. It's a fairly new car. I'm thinking it's a, what they call the 1932 design. But I, without looking up the number series, I can't be sure of that. It Is might it be a 19... Pardon? Is it galvanized? Yes, yes, the roofs were galvanized on the steel yeah, car. Yeah, because they were doing hot dip zinc back then, so that would, yeah, that it's bare metal, but it's protected by zinc. Yes, yeah, we'll show a little more of that when we get to roofs. Um, this picture I drove because it shows three of those 1923 tripe design cars. There's the B&O car, which is called the M26, uh, variants thereof, which is real similar to the Penzi X29, which is uh, on the other end of the New York Central car in between, which is slightly different in dimensions. And also, if you look above it, there's another, another New York Central car spotted back uh, at the building. Well, I thought that was great to get a picture of three of those variants all together. Um, one of the, we get into more variants here. We've got that M26, that B&O car there. You can see how short it is compared to the other cars. Again, I was going to look up these numbers. Um, what I can tell you for probably for sure is that New Haven car again is what they, it has an inside height of 10 foot 6 inches. Whereas I'm thinking the, the ACL car and the southern, the Southern Pacific car, as well as the as the New York as the uh, Santa Fe car, all have ten foot inside height. Okay. Now, when we get to these steel cars, like the well, we'll go with just the Santa Fe car and the ACL car. Those are 1937 design cars. That was the government kept trying to make a standard design for freight cars, and the railroads kept messing with them, but these finally took hold and there were lots and lots and lots of cars built that looked like those um and i think that new haven cars is, is uh is a, a ps1 but you can see it's even slightly at that 10 foot six inside height is slightly taller than the other cars and also notice the the southern pacific car has a 12 panel side the other cars have 10 panels, there's five on each side of the door, whereas the Southern Pacific car has six on each side of the door. That car was built by uh, Intermountain, if you want to find a model of those. They were basically done following a Great Northern prototype, but this car can be built from that also. Um, and, and also we can, we can look at the doors on these cars. If you look at the door on the ACL car, that's a corrugated door built by Youngstown in Youngstown, Ohio. And the door on this on the on the Southern Pacific car is what's called a superior door. And you can see it's made out of flat sections. Those are the two most popular doors. Um, here's a variation. There's, these are I, most people refer to these as 37 cars, but they're not supposed to be. They're supposed to be earlier than that. And I'm not. In, into that, so I'm not going to argue about it, but it shows you that uh, the Great Northern served a lot of the uh, lumber industry out west. And to show their support for the lumber industry, they bought hundreds and hundreds of these cars that are basically steel cars, but they have wood, uh, wood sheathing on the outside. Another question. Yes. On the center of the door, there's a flat plate. On yep. each of the cars you're showing, it's in a very different location. Some are high, some are offsets. What is the purpose of that? The, the, the larger one is a placard board. You can see there's one on the end of the car too. 
Yeah. That's where you would put any information uh, pertaining to what's in the car. If it was explosives, you'd put that on there. If you didn't want to hump it, you'd put that on there. If you wanted to um, if you have it unloaded on the other side, you'd put that on there. But that's where that information would go. Now, how the smaller that, how, one. Uh, how would that have been secured at that period? With a staple gun. Yeah. Staple gun? It's a wood yeah. plate? Or a tack, an attack hammer. Yeah. Oh, thank and you. And that's why they, a lot of people call them tack boards, but they're really called placards. Um, there are some videos showing uh, Carmen actually going around tacking those cards on um, in some actual freight yards in the filmed in the late 40s and 50s. So yeah, you can see the on the small uh, smaller one down toward the lower where a man could actually walk up to that has the route card on. That would give some information about where this car was going. That's oh, interesting. <laughs> I was surprised by its location because on most cars you've shown so far, they were very high. So they had to use a ladder or something to get up yeah, there. I'll have it. Yeah, uh, you would get to that one if you were on a platform, if they were loading it from a platform. The end would be difficult. You would have to get on a ladder to get up to the end one. I think that also, was to keep people from ripping them off. I was going to say, also, Clark, I think if, if you go back, early cars had them high. And they just kept lowering them, and that there were actually standards that eventually changed them from higher to lower. I don't know the exact year, but it was sometime were, in the mid fifties. But they took that upper upper placard and lowered it down. Yep. <laughs> okay. Now, one of the other thing we can look at because I'm not talking about doors here, but beings, I'm just bringing it up. This is a this. <laughs> This, I'm probably confused. I try not to confuse everybody, but this is a young sound door that's made out of three panels. And if you want to get particular, you can count how many corrugations are in each panel. But for, yeah, you've got to do that if you want to build this car. But if, if you notice that between the sections, there's a flat area and it's recessed. Now, if we look at this car, this car has the improved dreadnought end. A dreadnought door as the end too, but as the improved dreadnought door that would have came out. Uh, well, this is 46. Um, and you'll notice that that one there, uh, the latch is in the center of the door, and also where the three uh, portions are put together, it's an outward seam. Yep. And I think I'm just talking about sides here, but we, I'll go over some other stuff. Uh, the Santa Fe really liked these these uh, to have their brakes uh, cylinders crossways instead of lengthwise. It was standard for lengthwise. Santa Fe liked them crossways. You can see that there. And also, we're getting to where we're using a standard truck anymore. The trucks under these cars are uh, are AC A ASF A3 ride control trucks. Uh, if you want to put them under HO, uh, uh, Kato makes some good ones. Um, but the end of this car now, I'm going to, I think I'm going to talk about ends later. So I'll we'll up here, I don't think. Okay, this car here is important to have in here for modelers' purposes. This is what Athern modeled their boxcar after, this car. This is a 1937 design boxcar. And you'll notice if you look at the corner, the corner is what they call square. It has a ridge along the corner. And you can see the end fits in behind that sheet metal panel and is riveted there. And that's the way the Athern car is. Now the real rub is only the Illinois Central the Sioux and the DSSNA had these cars. So if you have an Athern car, box car, and it's not lettered for Illinois Central, Sioux, or DSSNA, throw it in the trash, garbage. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is the is the next car. There were, like I said, a couple thousand of those made. Then they went with this design, which is called the W corner post. 
but where the <laughs> the W is inside, you can't see it. But what we're, modelers refer to these as round corners because you can see the corner of the car is rounded before it, it's riveted to the side panel. This is what 99% uh, of the quality HO models have for an end. And this car here is, we're getting a little newer yet. This car has a, has a six or 12 panel welded side. Five panel superior door. Yes, that's versus the other one car, I think had a seven. And you'll seven. notice this one, they've lowered the tack boards on too. So we've talked, we were just talking about, but they left the ones on the end up. <clears throat> this car is, it was Holman's first attempt at an all welded car. And its name is about 17 words in it. Uh, basically light welded, thin metal box car of some kind. But John Nurick, who used to be with the Rensselaer Model Railroad Club, he used to be, he's the one behind a lot of this uh, model nomenclature for what, instead of the uh, engineering nomenclature. And he dubbed, these cars were built as a predecessor to the PS1 box car that Pullman made that was so popular. And so he labeled this car PS0, just so somebody would know it came before the PS1. And you'll notice it has a radial roof on this car, which is uh, the, the roof is, uh, is a bow shape instead of peaked. And again, it has the superior door. And uh, we'll just call those double truss trucks. Uh, you know, that's the other thing. There's uh, people talk about Bettendorf trucks. Well, the Bettendorf truck is a truck that has an integral um, journal box. It's cast as one piece. So that's what, that's what Bettendorf came up with. And there's umpteen different designs that have that, that, that integral one piece construction. This car here is a, is a PS1 box car. But the Northwestern being the Northwestern, they bought hundreds of these things with riveted sides instead of welded sides. And you can see here, this car can be made easily with, uh, uh, with, inter, with uh, inner mountain parts, yes. Um, and you'll notice it has the, the A3, the ACF A3 right control trucks. And this one does too. This is a this one here is a PS1 with the welded sides, like 99% of them do. Okay, the one before with the riveted side, that was a PS1, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's a PS1 box car. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. And this one is a PS1 box car also. Okay. I it was buy... just the. Go on. Go ahead. Why well, buy... well, didn't. The... This is an all welded car where the Northwestern was the only, well, there was one other railroad that bought a large numbers of cars with the riveted sides. Okay. Yeah, I just I've been buying in. the Katy car. Yes, uh, that's this car. They're great. They cars. probably did this model. Yeah, the one, the, the, and I was just looking at, at one of them and it's, it's a welded seam and not a riveted seam. Yes, only the Northwestern not all of the Northwesterns were riveted. They had some that were that they bought that were welded also. So and yeah, the, the stuff that Katie makes is is as accurate as almost anybody's gonna make. They they have some screw-ups, but not too bad. You know, maybe the car should have black ends and it doesn't, or maybe they didn't make the right running board for it at the time. Uh, but yeah, their cars are usually relatively accurate. And you can see this car has a built date of 54 and it has the lower placard car on the door. So that sets the date for when that came about. Oh, look at that. It does. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, now, I'm, I'm looking yeah. at a, I'm looking at a 50 footer. Yeah. And, um, it's got the lower door or it's got the lower placard. Yeah. On it. 
and the address and it should have a reway date or a built date newer than 54. yeah it does yeah now this car here now notice this car this car was rebuilt or actually it wasn't rebuilt it was these were came second hand for the northwestern and it, i would it looks like clinton 1173 and you'll notice that it still has the placard up high on the door. So there was no date when you had to do that. But the reason I threw this in, this is another PS1, but it's only a 10 foot high car. Uh, you can see the difference with the car in front of it there. And this is what that car would look like new. It would have come, it was an early PS1, uh, 10 foot high inside height, and it came from uh, the New Haven. Um, get into, uh, now this is a transition of some kind that I can't remember what comes next. Some of the cheap ones. Okay. Roofs. <laughs> we'll talk about roofs there a little bit. Um, if you look at the, if we look at the, the cars closest to us on the left, you can see that it's a Pennsylvania car with that, well, it's actually a riveted flat panel roof. The car next to it is a relatively standard uh, roof that came out um, and it's it's called a diagonal panel. There are flat panels that have little, that, well, there are panel, roof panels and they have little lips that come up on the end and they put that seam cap, that color piece over the top of it. So they actually can flex if they need to. I was gonna get a picture of a wrecked one put in here so you could see all the different panels and I forgot. Um, and also the running board here. This one has an apex running board, I think, or is that? I'm going to skip on that one. We'll talk about running boards <laughs> later. That could very well, that could well be a gypsum running board. It's hard to tell. Uh, but anyway, if we look at the third car over, uh, it's one of those Milwaukee guys again. We can tell by looking at the bats on the roof. It's got those narrow bats at the end and in the middle. A uh, friend of mine just made that all in car back there he, out of several different pieces. But you know, it has a radial roof and it has an inverse dreadnought in. The end goes, the, the pressings go inward instead of outward. But we'll talk about ends in more detail later. This is that, um, what's called, the, uh, it's a flat roof with battens and everything is covered with steel and uh, they're called XLA roofs, I do believe. And here's a, here's a drawing of, of one of those roofs. So the older cars, the older double sheath wood cars us usually would have, or single sheath cars may too, have this roof on them. But as we get uh, this one here, I put in because it shows you a freshly painted car where they painted the roof and then a really nicely weathered car. That would be really fun to do the roof on that guy. Um, next roof in, in, I think, in, I'm gonna go with a newer roof um, would be this, what's called a Hutchins dry lading. And you notice it's, it's the panels and they have seam caps and they have bolts through the seam caps. And you'll notice there's a little ridge in the center of that flat panel. And here's a, a, a drawing of that roof. And you see that one. This, if you have Accurail wood cars, they would, they, their single sheath cars have this roof on. This is another photo uh, of that Santa, those Santa Fe cars, not Santa Fe, the, excuse me, the uh, Pennsylvania cars with that flat roof. This guy here has a, a newer roof that took off and was a standard for several years. It's a, what's called the diagonal panel roof. We talked about those a minute ago. But you can see up there that, that uh, those roofs, not the end panels, but the others all have the stiffener by pressing a diagonal uh, pressing into uh, each half of the roof. This one shows it off a little better. And that has a Morton running board on it. They have little holes in them. Katie makes this running board now, if anybody needs some. They 
when, if you have a Pennsylvania 40 foot PS1 Western Pacific box car in the 20,000s number system, it's supposed to have this running board on it. So you want to replace that. Plano, Plano has them too. Uh, Plano also yes, has but them in the, the yes, but, plastic. Yes, but but the, the KD1 is so much, you just pl plop it on there. It, it, it's it's perfect. It's got the I it's agree. got the corner grabs on it. Everything is there. Yep. You snip off all of the little tabs and, and glue it down with uh, canopy glue. Now this car I threw in there. This is a rebuilt car, single sheath car. You can see it has a hat section sides. And this one they just put uh, flat sheet metal on the roof and welded it together. Here's another photo of a flat sheet metal roof that they uh, has riveted together. Um, next up, after the after the popularity of that rectangular panel, they went with this that what's called the diagonal panel. These came out in I think the late '40s. It kind of dates. There's a line in between where they went from the from the from the rectangular to this diagonal. Um, but what's interesting about this photo is if I, I've looked at uh, painting specs before and it'll say unpainted roof. And you look at a picture of the builder's photo of the car and the roof looks painted. It's really, really hard. And I finally figured out, and this roof shows it, where they took car cement, which is a tar-like substance. And they went along the edge of the roof around the perimeter where all those rivets are, and they covered them. And then they also covered the seam caps with this yep. tar. Then they would go back and paint that, the body color. So if you're on the ground and looking at it, the roof looks painted when it's really not. This is a better picture. It shows that, that, that diagonal, what's called a diagonal panel, because it has that diagonal trench basically through the through across the roof. Okay, so that's a negative. I mean, it goes down. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you've you've got the like your 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 rectangular panels like you had before that would lift up, but then you have that extra pressing. I think what they did is it just my guess is they could make it out of lighter material by putting that extra make it strong by putting that extra uh, pressing in it. Put a stamping in there that would double the strength of that piece of metal. Yeah, so they could make it thinner and make the car lighter, so it could carry more. Yeah. Uh, this is a PS1 box car, an early PS1. There, I know a few years back down in St. Louis, Ed Hawkins did a thing on PS1 box cars, and it lasted about two hours. And we were hoping he'd come out with an RP psych, and he hasn't. And it's been irritating because he told you everything you needed to know and stuff you wouldn't even think to ask about PS1 boxcars. Um, but they were made in two different places and that won't get into any of that. But what I wanted to show here is the PS1 boxcar has what they call a bow tie on the roof. And you can see their pressing is narrower in the middle and it gets wider to the outside. And uh, this is an older version because the end panel does not have a pressing in it. Newer cars in 1950-ish, they would have a pressing on the end. These cars started to be built in 48. Um, this one shows, you can just see a line there uh, where it has the end, end pressing on this car. This would be a later model uh, Northwestern car, eight foot door. One of these sat out at the, at the trolley at Emory here for years and years. And they finally uh, took it over to one of the old lumber yards on a spur track and uh, and cut it all up. But the, the ACF ride control trucks are still sitting there in the weeds. Now we'll go into the, the more obscure. Uh, Milwaukee made thousands of these uh, their own design, their own, their own thing. They built them themselves. And their roof, you can see each one of the panels has two uh, pressings in it, or, and uh, they're well. The roofs are welded together, so there's no seam caps. Um, this just shows a variety of of roofs. Uh, 
you can see there most of them are in the diagonal panel and then there's a flat panel on the left. Uh, this one here, we've got the Southern car has the diagonal panel, I mean, the, the rectangular panel roof, the Milwaukee car behind the steel Milwaukee car behind it has the diagonal panel roof and the two older Milwaukee cars have that XLA roof. Yep. And these roofs <laughs> are radial roofs and I don't know if they're Hutchins. They kind of look like a Hutchins roof, but I don't know if they are or not. But these are uh, uh, in a Norfolk Western yard. Norfolk Western really like these uh, radial roofs. So that's what that, that's about. And uh, the cars are Hutchins. Lower, pardon? They are Hutchins. Okay. Definitely that, can tell by the lower left one. Notice you can see the two. Uh, yeah, it has, yeah, it has two of those. Yes. And uh, there's a, a B and O wagon top box car in the in the lower right. Uh, you can see how that's all made out of one piece. And the the reason I put this in is for the car next to that between the that car and the hopper cars is, is a car with a with a Viking roof, which looks like corrug a corrugated roof. Northwestern really liked those roofs. Here's a, a better picture of one. <clears throat> and being as a color picture, you can see that this roof never had any car cement. It was always left unpainted, the whole thing. And being as we're looking at this running board, this is a real popular one. This is It's basically, you can see it's, it's, it's rectangles if you look at it. Again, Katie and uh, Plano makes these. Ends. I think we're going to look at car ends now. Does anybody make that car or make a roof like that? This one? I think. Yes. Yeah, you can. Uh, this Plains Hobbies makes that roof. Yep. Okay. Plastic. Okay. I didn't know they did that. Yeah, and you can put them on. Uh, they're made to fit on the red caboose box car, but they'll fit on other box cars as well. Sure. You know, if you're going to model a Northwestern, many of their cars had this roof on. Uh, I think this is the end of things here, but <laughs> if we look at the car on the left, it has what's called a dreadnought end. And you can see it has, the, the end car has three different sections to the, to the end. Each one of them has three large pressings, cigar-like pressings, and they have little darts in between them. Uh, the car next to it is more, more of a stand, is a shorter car, so it only has two panels on the end, has four pressings on the top, five pressings on the bottom. That's relatively standard for a, a 10 foot high box car. The next three cars all have what's known as the earlier end, which is a Murphy end. And you can notice uh, the car next to where the man is standing on the right. It's a taller car, so it has three five 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 ends. They were standard ends for the USRA cars. Um, the next car is what they call a seven eight design, which was a fairly standard. And then the, the car in the middle has an inverse or reverse Murphy end, where you can see they basically just put it on backwards from the other one. In wooden cars, uh, there were a lot of different ends, but most of them look similar to this. They would have a couple of vertical supports of stronger and then a couple of angle ones coming down. Uh, this car has a car heart, a car heart, a, a, a car mark, a car mark cut lever. Uh, Carmer. And Carmer. These, yeah, they Clark were. Carmer. Uh, okay, Carmer, yes, not car heart. E -R -M -E -R. Yeah. Yes, I, I'm, yes. Uh, but the problem with this, this type of uncoupling lever is that the man would have to push down on it to raise the pin for the coupler. And in doing so, he could put himself in danger of falling between the cars. So they, they were lasted, there was no, as far as I know, there was no date where they were taken out of service, but they were on a lot of earlier cars. Uh, this is a this is the USRA double Mark, chief car. Yes. Can you go back to that photo? Yep. 
No, that's pretty unusual too. Notice the diagonal flat instead of the two in the corner, let's say upper right and lower uh, corner. Notice it has one long flat panel and the end yeah. section going on. That's I, yeah, pretty unusual. Yeah, that's, uh, I can't see where, oh, it's a B5044 if you want to make one. That's, you know, these railroads, they had classes for cars and it irritates the crap out of me because somebody will say, oh, I'm building an SB, uh, B5044. Well, what the hell is that? You know, give me a number series so I can look it up. Uh, but this shows, this and also shows those Z-bar bracing. You can get a good look at it here where the first, the, the horizontal rib, you can see there's a straight piece and then you'll notice that angled one is hollow there because of the Z shape to it. By the way, this is the standard uh, USRA uh, double sheath car with the 555 uh, uh, Murphy N and Carmar cut lever, which were on the USRA cars. Now this guy, this guy is copy, a uh, basically a copy of the USRA design, but you notice there's a different N. It has that 78N. So this thing would be called a USRA clone. If, if, it's, if it's not exactly that design, they call them clones because they're made similar. Um, and you'll notice this guy has a, a different kind of pin lifter. Um, this is uh, an NP car. You can see the radio roof. It has that 7 8 end, uh, double sheath sides. This car was, I've got one that I bought years ago from Sunshine, uh, but now it's available from Rapido if you want to get one ready to run. Uh, this is that Pensy. This is not an X29. This might be earlier with the wrong way door. I'm not going to say for sure. Uh, M X26 or something. I don't know. But you'll notice that the roofs on these cars with that overhang, they would leak and water would get down in between the panels and it rusts out the steel at the bottom. Oh, so you yeah. can see here they patched it. And this is an early job because they riveted the patches on. In later years, they would weld them on. And this has the Carmark cut lever on it. And oh, I'll mention on, on the trucks. If you look at the trucks where the springs are, there's this U-shaped piece of metal that comes up on both sides. It's called a spring plank. And that is basically like a channel iron that runs all the way across the car. Uh, and the springs set in that thing. So if somebody talks about spring plank trucks, that's what they're talking about. And uh, Accurail makes some really nice spring plank trucks. So basically what I do is if I'm modeling a car and it has spring planks, I'll use their trucks. Uh, this guy here is basically real similar to design of that Pensy design, but it has a single sheet that's wood sides and a funny door. Plain, how about the end? That's the end. Yeah, of the it's not plain end like this guy. And the roof is real, you'll notice that, well, you can't tell that picture, but the roof is real similar too. This is that 1923 design thing again. And you, the railroads were all over the place with those. They would basically take the drawings and do what they wanted with them. This is a, a taller single sheath um, automobile car. And those taller cars, they would have these uh, three panel ends, dreadnought ends. Oh, I should talk about the brakes, why the brake wheels. This is a, a, an Ajax, uh, which was a fairly common design. This one has uh, some, uh, and uh, what am I looking at, the different string? Oh, this is, this is your, your standard 10 foot high car. If you look on the side, it says IH 10 foot zero. And it has two panels, four pressings on the top and five pressings on the bottom. Yep. This is the same design, but this 37 design, but they modified it to be taller. So this guy is six inches taller. And if you look here, it says IH 
10 foot, six inches. And this guy has the equal number of pressings top and bottom. And I was gonna look up that handbrake and I forgot to, I don't know if it's, it might be universal, but I can't say for sure. I, I agree, universal is what I think it is. Okay, fair enough then. Well, this is that picture we showed earlier. Uh, I think I threw it in here because it shows the next iteration of the ends. Besides having the newer door on it, it has the new, what do they call improved dreadnought end. And again, modelers call these things rolling pin ends because as you can see, it's fat in the middle and narrow on each side, the, that large pressing. So it kind of looks like a rolling pin. And then there's darts that go all the way across in between them. And th this is a 4-4 uh, improved dreadnought end or IDE. And you can see this car here is also a 12 panel car. Uh, uh, there was only a few railroads that bought these like this. Um, this one here is an, an improvement over the last, or a, a different version of the last one. This one is called, this is an improved dreadnought end, but it's called an R34, <coughs> because it has a rectangle at the top. So there's a rectangle, there's three rolling pins, and then four rolling pins. So this car has an R34 IDEN. Here's another photo of that same thing. This one has an equipped coin. I mean, a superior handbrake on the end of it. There you go. Yep, we got a different one. Now this guy is a 10 foot. These, these cars here, I, I should have said something earlier, but they call these design a 1942 or a design car, this car came, was built in 1942 with that improved end on it, with that rolling pin end. But this car is only 10 foot high. So instead of having that large rectangle at the top of the end, it just has that small crease in above, above the, uh, the three, four end. Uh, there's, there's also a version called the dart knot. And I didn't have a picture of a dart knot box car. So I use this reefer instead. But as you can see, it has the rolling pins on the end, but there's no intermediate uh, darts or, or complete uh, pressings all the way across the car. They're just flat in between them. And I know that there are a few railroads had cars like this, Rock Island being one. And then the last one we're gonna talk about is the banana taper. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see those those large pressings kind of look like a banana. And uh, this is an R34 banana taper. I don't know if there if, if there's any distinction between uh, if it's IDE. I, I can't tell you. But it's just a newer car. You can see this thing. Well, it's got a reway date of 60, so I don't know when it was built for sure. And no polling pockets. Yeah, no pulling pockets on this car. I don't know if you know. If that car has pulling pockets. Well, there is a point. Right, right here. Where you could put a pole in if you wanted to. And uh, this car does not have those. Because they, and also notice, they lowered the end placard on this guy. Yep. He had something on him. And he, this is a neat thing you can do with your models. I do this with my, I put, I put uh, route cards on all mine. I just use an old piece of, of white decal. Some people use paper. Um, and you can, uh, I use old uh, Champ or Walther's white striping and it breaks up and you can just put the little pieces on there. Uh, so it looks like they've been ripped off. On a, on a wooden car, a lot of times they stapled it in this area here. So I just put a whole bunch of little bitty pieces on there. What railroad is that from? This guy? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, Buffalo Creek. Oh, um, okay. I couldn't read it. Okay. That's a Bethel made. Uh, this is a bunch of, yeah. Uh, I think they were out in Buffalo. New York. They were flower collars. New York. Yeah, this in here, I don't know. I, these are a bunch of oddball ends that I put in here. Um, this guy, I, I, I'm not going to give a description. I'm just going to show it. It's, 
it's I don't know what it is, but uh, it's kind of neat. Uh, this one is the PS1N with an Equipco handbrake up there. Um, and there's a, oh, this is an early, early end. You'll notice if you look up next to the handbrake under the running board, it's a flat section. There's nothing there. And you also notice the ladder on the end, the styles on both sides are straight and parallel. The newer ends after 50, for we'll say, uh, you'll notice there are six little rectangles uh, pressed into that peak underneath the running board. And also, uh, you'll notice that the, there's an offset on that inner style on the ladder. Um, if you're going to make one of those uh, northwestern cars with the with with the riveted sides, you want it to look like the other car, not this car, because they were earlier built cars. I'm looking at the roof on this thing, and it almost looks like. When they sprayed those seam caps with paint, they sprayed right over the apex running board. If you look at the running board, it's not painted, except there's dark shadows where every one of the seam caps are at. Clever. Okay, this is, uh, I believe this is called a Hutchins can. There were several variations to this. Some of them went inward instead of outward, but they're kind of neat. And there's some people on Shapeways that make this end, and uh, I don't know what cars they're for right off hand. You can get them from Westerfield too if you want. Rest. Westerfield has those too. Okay. Yep. Here's another end. I'm I'm guessing. I don't know if this is a Pullman. The Pullman. No, it's an ACF car. So we're going to call this an ACF proprietary end. You'll notice it has the 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 darks across it and they wrap around the end of the car. This one's a Pullman proprietary end. And you notice it's darts end before the end of the car. Stan Radar was used to make this end and uh, Resin Car Works made it this car. Uh, there were other cars that used this end besides the Great Western. The Great Western also had some 50 footers that had five five ends because they were taller, 10 foot six cars instead of 10 foot cars. Uh, is this a Buckeye end? Yep. I believe this is a, a 1932 design car and the ends were all over the place on these cars all look the same from the side, but the ends and the roofs would be altogether different. I believe that's a Buckeye end. It is. And yep. this is a, a, a Duco end. Or, um, what well, interesting story here is this car was originally made by Sunshine, and I think Inner Mountain has this now that you can buy it probably right around. Um, but the Snow was the only guy to have these, and I don't think they had too many. But I bought one of the, and it has a Viking roof besides, and I bought one of these car kits from uh, uh, Displays Hobbies, had a bunch of uh, the IMWX, the predecessor to Red Caboose. They had so to make three. a whole bunch. Pardon? Oh, I'm sorry. Also, the door three panel. Yes. Yeah. Let's get to that. Uh, the the <laughs> the sunshine made this one anyway. I bought the one uh, uh, decorated for C and O. I had to change the number on the car, which was no big deal. Uh, but at that time, uh, Keith uh, Renator, he made uh, resin castings for this end and that three panel door. And I bought those from him and used on the car. And we were having an operating session one time and a guy was over, I think it was one of my very first operating sessions. And we pulled this car out from behind the building and this guy looked at it and he said, holy crap, is that a rocket launcher? <laughs> because the end of it, <laughs> it looks like it has, but the ends of missiles sticking out the end of it. But yeah, that's about the most elaborate end. Other than that, what is that, that uh, dark, there's another one that had, like a bullseye on the end, but I can't. What is that I end called? It. It's a duco or dupo, D U P O or D U C O, one or the other. Okay. But you can get, the, I think, Inner Mountain sells this car. God, I hate dealing with her. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, this one here shows the, the, the real joy of modeling 
uh, the late 40s and 50s and uh, all the varieties of boxcar red uh, weathering the car height. You know, it's just a step from one to the next, to the next, to the next. Really nice. And that's it. And if you got questions, we can go back. Otherwise, I'll shut it off. The cross-mounted air reservoir on the Santa Fe car. Uh-huh. Why did they do that? I don't know. Okay. The, 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 the TNP had some cars like that. Um, and I think a lot, of the, a lot of the X-29s had that traverse mounted. Uh, and I don't know if they, they may have felt it was easier to repair. You know, I don't, I don't know. There had, there had to be a reason why they did that. Engineering also felt that sometimes it was, the piping was easier that way than the other standard. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, so the, you know, there were they had the reasons for doing that, but I I'm not privy to that information. <laughs> Okie dokie. All that's right, that's, that's great, Clark. Thank you so much. Um, I hope I didn't confuse everybody too badly or get well, too I wonder, much is information there a, screwed up. Is there a reference book on this that that has all that information? <laughs> It'd be a great book if there isn't. There, there well, yeah, there's a whole series of 35 books <laughs> that, that no, tell you. No. You, you, hey, how about MR, MRH, Model Railroad? Hobbies? Yes, yes, um, they, they, they did one. They on did car. one on each of these type of sections: one on doors, one on roofs, one on ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then well, I'm thinking of uh, Rail Model Journal. They put out a, a book that had was just on boxcars and it would have a picture of uh it, it was the older stuff when when uh, uh the the best on the market was cnbt and they would show ha have three of their different ends next to each other so you could compare one to the next uh so there is information out there and i've just picked it up over uh the last 30 years or 40 years yeah it's great info i appreciate it well, that's, I'll get rid of this. Stop sharing. Oh, here, the, the red button, tell me. And the MRH series was done by Bale. Here, here's an example. I took them, made them, and then I bound them. So oh, here's right. an example of a couple of them. Yeah. They were done by Richard Bale for MRH on each of the type mm -hmm. uh, series or whatever. You could probably go back and, and look it through there and find out, look him up, and it might give you that information mm -hmm. on, on their website. Very good. All right. Well, uh, next week, uh, John Golden is going to present on uh, his techniques for um, uh, making turnouts. And uh, so we look forward to that. Thank you very much, Clark, for today's informative presentation on boxcars everything you ever wanted to know right and, <laughs> yeah, uh, more than more than yeah. Yeah. we didn't talk about sim tabs or anything. <laughs> yeah. i was going to say everything you no, want no. to know by clark's interpretation which can be taken with a <laughs> yeah yeah no i tried to just show the different ends of the sides and the roofs you know something yeah, that's that, it still gets confusing i'm sure Yep. You have some great photos there, Clark. There's some oh, yeah. okay. Just the yeah. stuff that uh, when people put them like on the steam freight car list, they're always putting, and you just load them into a file. Yep. Mm -hmm. Miscellaneous freight cars, and there's hundreds of them in there. It's just trying to pick the one you want. Right. Okay. Yep. Keeping them no, organized. Well, thanks again. We'll be doing yep. this again we'll next, next yeah, week. Yeah, I want to uh, see. You get John yeah. on here, that'd be good. Yeah, yep. that's the plan. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. See you guys. Bye-bye.